folks, it was inevitable. I know that these tier list videos are super popular on YouTube, but aside from that, I just love watching them. And so I thought if I was ever going to make a YouTube channel, especially about movies, then yeah, at some point or another, I was gonna make a tier list video. And so here it is. Hopefully the first of many. I really, really wanted to make an MCU movies tier list video, but that's gonna have to come much later after I finish my Infinity Saga rewatch because I just can't make one while I'm in the middle of watching all 23 films, since I'm not completely sure about how I stand on each of the movies after rewatching them. However, when looking at what I could do to make a tier list video at the moment, well, Pixar seemed like a very good option. Everyone knows Pixar and generally they love all their movies. Pixar just knows how to reach into the human spirit and draw out the emotion from the audience. Their movies are really well known for just going deep into the emotional thematic elements of what makes us human, and that's why their movies are so successful. And you know, most of them are just flat out entertaining with some gorgeous visuals. So here we go. In today's video, I'm going to be putting together a tier list of all 22 currently released Pixar films. Before we get started into this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already to support the channel. We just hit 50 subscribers, so thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the support. This channel's only been up for about a month, but the amount of support that I've gotten from you guys has been incredible, and I just can't wait to see where this channel goes from here on out. The link to the template will be down in the description below, so if you want to compare your results with mine, then check it out. Also, quick disclaimer with all these videos, these are just my opinions, completely subjective and based on my personal experiences. You don't have to agree with me at all. Just remember to be respectful of other people's opinions in the comments down below so that we can all have a good discussion about these films. Alright, with all that out of the way, let's get started. The first film up is, well, up. And we're getting this tier list started out with a bang because I'm going to put it in the S tier. I mean, we all can live your life to the fullest. And on top of that, it's framed in such a way that it's fun. I mean, a house floating away with a bunch of balloons? Who would have thought a film with that sort of frame narrative would be so emotional? Up next, we have the first Toy Story, which I'm going to put in the A tier. It is completely staggering and mind-blowing to me that this film was released over 20 years ago. And yes, while the animation may not be the greatest when you rewatch the film, it's a little clunky here and there, this film was groundbreaking. When you look at this film on the surface, it's just a fun kids film with fun characters like Buzz and Woody. But underneath the surface, and this is what Pixar is so good at, they're able to explore the themes of friendship and acceptance in such a way to where it's enjoyable for the younger audiences while still being emotionally resonant with the older ones too. This film represents what Pixar stands for, making quality films that appeal to the younger generations while exploring deeper themes that can speak to the entire family. This film truly has stood the test of time. Up next we have Monsters University, which I'm going to put in the B tier. Now this might be one of the more controversial picks of this list, but I'm going to stand by it. I know a lot of people don't really like Monsters University, and I can completely understand that. It's not really that top, top tier Pixar that a lot of people were expecting from these characters and this team. However, I just can't help but like this movie. Maybe it's more for personal reasons, I fully admit that, but whenever I see this film, I just have a blast watching it, and the ending still resonates with me every time. The way that they develop these characters of Mike and Sully that lead into Monsters, Inc., I think that's great. And while the story isn't the most captivating per se, I still think that there's enough entertainment to be had all around. Is it the greatest film? No, but I think it's a feel-good movie, to where when you watch it from beginning to end, you just feel good after the credits start rolling. Up next is Finding Dory, which I'm going to put in the B tier as well. So Finding Nemo was one of my favorite movies when I was growing up, and needless to say, I was super excited when Finding Dory was announced to be coming out. And when I watched this movie, the first three-fourths of it, I was having a blast. I personally think, and this also may be a little controversial amongst you guys, but up until the point where Dory meets her parents, I think this movie was on par with the original. I think the first three-fourths of this movie were spectacularly done, with the same great characters and same great emotion and great story and fun visuals. Really exploring the ideas of home and where you come from, I mean, that's one of the most profound themes that Pixar has chosen to explore in these films. That being said, well, after the three-fourths mark, then an octopus drives a truck off the cliff in slow motion. And sorry, Pixar, but I can't really get behind that. So while the first three-fourths are amazing in my opinion, the last fourth just kind of ruins it for me, which is why it goes in the B tier. Up next is Finding Nemo, which is going in the S tier. Call me nostalgic, call me biased, I completely understand because the reason that this film is so high up for me, personally, is probably because it's one of the films I've seen the most in my entire life. That being said though, if you rewatch this film, it's still beautifully done. I mean, for having been done almost 20 years ago, the way that they developed the characters of Marlon, Dory, and Nemo, and explore the relationships between father and son, that's Pixar at its best. 
The characters are witty, they're funny, they're engaging, they're entertaining. It's just classic Pixar. From the very beginning, you're captivated with the story and invested in these characters, and that's where the emotion comes in. That's what allows the emotion to really hit home for you towards the end. And also, can we talk about the first five minutes? Because, man, that was dark. Surprisingly so. Pixar was bold, and they were making bold moves. They were making a children's film, but also making a film for everyone. Coming up next is Cars 2, which is going in the D tier. I think it's safe to say that none of these films are really going into F territory. Because F tier to me for these animated films are films that bombed for both the kids as well as everyone else. But if you can make a film that's at least entertaining to kids, well, at least you deserve to go in the D tier. Because Cars 2 is not a good movie. It's pretty bad. That being said though, if you're a kid watching this film, I'm sure you're going to be entertained. It's got enough excitement, clashy visuals, car chases, all that, that's gonna have you entertained for probably the entire runtime. But from our perspective, yeah, this film is pretty bad. I don't know who decided to make Larry the Cable Guy the lead for this film, but nope, nope, it didn't, it didn't work. Up next is Fantastic Four, I mean The Incredibles, which is going in the A tier. But seriously, this movie is basically Fantastic Four, and it did it incredibly well. This is an interesting Pixar film because it doesn't necessarily dive into the emotion as much as the other films might. That being said, what makes this film so good is just the action, the story, the characters, everything else about it. While there's no real emotional gut punch, you really find yourself caring for these characters in this family. And to his credit, Syndrome is a great villain. Brad Bird did a great job with this character. So basically, you have a really, really good superhero film just animated. And it still holds up to this very day. Up next is another Brad Bird directed film, Ratatouille, which I'm going to put in the B tier. Now, I personally know a ton of people who love this movie, and that's great. As for me, well, I've seen it pretty recently, and it's a really entertaining film. I mean, first of all, the visual style of this movie is so, so incredibly unique, and it's awesome. We're dealing with something here that we haven't dealt with in any other Pixar film, and that's food. And when the animators are able to make the food look enticing to even the audience, that takes true skill. The cooking montages with Remy and Linguini and just the way that the camera moves, expertly done. However, this film kind of lacks the emotional oomph that a lot of the other Pixar films have. I mean, yes, seeing Ego flashback to his childhood, that was gold. But the film just kind of lacked this depth to it that a lot of other Pixar films have. It was a little more surface level in my opinion. I know that there are deeper themes and other things in there to explore, and I get that, and that's totally cool. But for me, every time I watch this movie, I'm entertained, but not much more than that. Up next is The Good Dinosaur, and that's going in the D tier. Yeah, this is a movie, huh? What in the world were they thinking? Again, it's not going into F tier because, well, I'm sure some kids are entertained by this movie, and that's totally great. As for me, I saw it once, and honestly, that was enough. Probably all I'm gonna say about this movie. Up next is the original Cars, which I'm gonna put in the C tier. So just to clarify, C in this case doesn't mean bad, it just means average. And to be honest, I think this movie is average to above average. There's nothing deep about this movie. It's just purely trying to be entertaining and a good kids movie. And it does well at that. For its time, when this movie came out, the visuals were absolutely incredible. And I'm sure they would have captivated the imagination of any kid who watched this movie. But now that we're older and we're watching this movie, well, it doesn't quite hold up that well. Yes, the characters are good, and you care a little bit more about Lightning McQueen than you do in subsequent films. And Larry the Cable Guy is a mater, he's a little less annoying, I guess. And yes, I know at the end there are some themes explored about helping others and letting go of your ego and arrogance and all of that. The outline of the story is actually almost like Thor 1, if that makes any sense. Arrogant guy gets humbled and then learns his lesson. And I didn't really like Thor 1, and I don't really like Cars either. Again, this movie has more nostalgic value to me than anything else. So, yeah, C. Up next is Cars 3, which I'm going to put in the C tier as well. Now, while Cars 1 may have been in the upper part of the C tier, I think Cars 3 is probably heading towards the lower end, like C-. It's fine. It's not terrible like Cars 2, and it has some good moments in there. And introducing this idea of Lightning McQueen being a veteran now and having to compete, yeah, that's interesting, I guess. I just don't find any consistency with a franchise like this, unlike Toy Story, for example. Honestly, the only point of these films are to entertain children, and nothing more. So, yeah, it goes in the C tier. Coming up next is A Bug's Life, which also goes in the C tier. This film came out a long time ago, right after Toy Story. And it's fine, I think. 
I'm gonna be straight up with you guys though, I haven't seen this movie in a long time, but from what I remember, it was entertaining enough, but there was nothing in there that really made me want to watch it again. First of all, as we saw with Toy Story 1, the animation in the 90s was a little bit wonky compared to today's standards. And on top of that, you have these bugs. It was a little bit disconcerting, to be honest. The story is interesting enough, I guess. You have this sort of underdog story going on with it, but again, there's just nothing that memorable about this movie. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. Up next, we have The Incredibles 2, which is going in the A tier. I love this movie. And while a lot of you may disagree with this, or maybe you don't, I honestly think that this film is easily on par with the first, if not better. Again, is there any real deeper theme or message to this other than kind of the whole technology is going to rule the world eventually and we got to be careful? No, not really. There's nothing that really makes you question yourself and think about your values as a human being or anything like that. But this film is clever, it's smart, it's entertaining, and it's just so enjoyable. The action and the animation are incredible. And this is one of the funniest animated movies that I've ever seen. Was it worth the wait? I'd say absolutely. Up next we have Wally, which I'm gonna put in the B tier. I think I might get some flack for this because I know a lot of people love this movie. This is almost an opposite film of some of the other Pixar films that I've talked about. I see very clearly the thematic messages and deeper meanings to this film. I do. Whereas some other films maybe just didn't have any to begin with. However, and maybe I'll change my mind if I watch this movie again, but I just don't find that much appeal with the film and I don't have any desire to see it again. I understand what the film is trying to say about our human desires and our human greed, but as a whole, I don't know. There's just something about this movie that doesn't make it appealing to me, at least. I know a lot of people love this movie and I totally respect that. I'm just saying for me, it doesn't really work that well. Up next is Monsters Inc, which is going in the A tier. This movie is expertly crafted with great character moments and great character development. Getting you to care about these monsters and this kid, Boo, I mean, that was a feat into itself. On top of that, the visuals are great, the story and premise are excellent and ingenious, and at the emotional core is this kid. And that really elevates this film above the rest. And if you've been watching this channel for the past month, well, you know, I love me a good villain. And Randall? Oh yeah, he's a great villain. Up next is a recent film, Inside Out, which I'm going to put in the S tier. This movie is one of my favorite films of all time, not just animated. I mean, what is there to say that hasn't been said already about this movie? The very premise alone is ingenious, and just the emotion that Pete Docter wrenches out of you towards the end of the movie, it's unlike anything that I've ever seen before. The message of this film is so, so unbelievably profound that sadness is okay. And the way that the story is told to where it's so entertaining for the majority of it until it just wallops you with a gut punch towards the end. And whenever Soul comes out, I'm so excited to see what Pete Doctor does next. Up next is Coco, and I'm going to put that in the S tier as well. Like Inside Out, this film is so carefully made and thoughtfully made as well. There's a lot of thought given to the cultural aspects of this movie, and that really pays off. But just like all the other Pixar films, although they're framed around this different setting, the bottom line is still the characters. And man, when they just start playing Remember Me, that was probably the hardest hit I've ever been with emotion when watching a film. Like all the other Pixar films, it's entertaining, it's enjoyable, you laugh along the way, you cry along the way, it's beautifully, beautifully made. Up next is Toy Story 2, which I'm going to put in the A tier. Now, call me crazy, because I know a lot of people absolutely adore this movie, but the Zerg I Am Your Father, that just kind of felt a little spoofy to me in maybe not the best ways. Is that just me? Let me know in the comments down below. Aside from that though, this film is hilarious, it's entertaining, and it has heart. It's a great continuation of these characters and their arcs from the past film. And the new characters introduced like Jesse and Bullseye, they're great as well. So yeah, it's everything from the first Toy Story just magnified a little bit. And that's still a great film. Up next is Toy Story 3, which I'm gonna put in the S tier. I mean, Toy Story 3, right? That ending alone? Yep that's gonna put it in the S tier. And speaking of films that took a long break between sequels like The Incredibles, this film took a pretty considerable break between two and three. And I guess it paid off because this film is incredible. I mean, first of all, the humor. This film is funny, and this film is genuinely entertaining to anyone of all ages. But of course, like trademark Pixar, it has such a big heart. And the villain, you know me and villains, Lotso, incredible. He's such a sympathetic villain, and he makes a great foil to our heroes. 
And again, this was just such a great way to conclude the trilogy, and even though they made a fourth film, well, this will still be probably the best Toy Story film that they ever make. Up next is Brave, which I'm gonna put in the D tier. Probably my least favorite Pixar film, even though I acknowledge that Cars 2 and The Good Dinosaur are probably worse. Just something about this movie doesn't really appeal to me that much, and the story, uh, I don't know. This doesn't feel like Pixar. It feels like a lower tier DreamWorks film made just for cash. Like, I just don't feel the same care and consideration that I feel in other Pixar movies when I watch this film. And granted, that hasn't been many times because, trust me, when I saw this film for the first or second time, I did not want to see it again. Up next is Onward, which I'm going to put in the B tier. So, I didn't really expect much from this movie, and I saw it on Disney Plus on a whim, considering that there were no new movies coming out this year, and I was blown away. I mean, first of all, the chemistry between Chris Pratt and Tom Holland, that's great. And the ending just knocked me down. It was crazy. I guess I should have seen it coming because, you know, Pixar doing Pixar things, but... Oh my goodness, when Tom Holland reads the list again, probably one of the best moments of any movie this year, which isn't saying much, but still. While the film isn't top, top tier, I think it's one of the highest B tier films because it's just so, so entertaining and then so emotional at the end when you least expect it. If you guys haven't seen it yet and you have Disney+, Plus, please give it a watch. It'll be worth your time and it's not super long either. Up next is Toy Story 4, which I'm going to put in the S tier. Call me crazy. And honestly, this might just be a case of me having seen this film the most recently, but I love this movie. When it was announced that they were making this film, I was so skeptical and cynical about it because I thought, no, we are not continuing this story after Toy Story 3. But like I say, you gotta keep your expectations at the door before you go and see a movie. Otherwise, you're just depriving yourself. So I went into this film with an open mind and I was blown away. This movie is incredible. I thought I would hate Forky, but you know what? He's one of my new favorite characters in the Pixar world. And the ending, oh my goodness, the ending to infinity and beyond gets me every time I see this film. So there you go. That was my first tier list video. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more. While you're at it, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button to support the channel. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you want to check out some more content, then check out the videos on the screen right now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.